What's up, Bobcats? In this lecture, I'm gonna go over the different components of blood, as well as hematopoiesis. So what I have drawn here on the board, this is what's representing a, a test tube. And so within this test tube is blood. And so in order to separate blood into its two main components, which include the formed elements, as well as the plasma, the blood will be drawn from the patient and it's then put into a centrifuge. So this centrifuge will spin the blood around and then it separates the blood based off of the density. And so the stuff that's found here at the bottom, this is gonna have more mass. And so what's found here at the bottom, this is the uh, formed elements. So the formed elements, that's what makes up about 45% of, the, of what's found in the blood. The part that's here on the top, this is the blood plasma. And this makes up about 55% of the blood. So some of the different components within the plasma, so you have water and electrolytes. So water is going to uh, function as a great solvent. It helps to dissolve things. So for instance, when you add um, salt or sodium chloride into water, it dissociates into the sodium ions as well as um, the chloride ions. And water also is um, great at absorbing heat. Uh, so some of the electrolytes that are found uh, within our blood, so you have sodium, you also have potassium, you have calcium, magnesium, as well as chloride ion and bicarbonate. So what these electrolytes what they're helping to do is to com uh, compartmentalize uh, the fluid that's the water that's um, within, you know, inside the cell and then outside of the cells. Uh, so one of the first things that I think about is just the concentration gradient uh, that differs within um, neurons. And so um, bicarbonate, so this is bicarbonate here, this uh, functions as a uh, buffer within the blood to pick up any of the um, excess acid or um, excess uh, protons that are found here, that are found within the blood. Okay, so water and electrolytes. So the next is the plasma proteins. So for plasma proteins, you have uh, one of them is what's known as albumin. So albumin, it's a um, carrier. It can carry um, a variety of things. It carries uh, drugs, it carries um, fats. Um, it has a, uh, it's a very versatile role, kind of like a, a vehicle to transport things. So you have albumin, you also have what's known as fibrinogen. And fibrinogen, we'll learn um, more about this particular protein, but it's involved with uh, the clotting of blood. So we're gonna get into uh, the mechanism of uh, hemostasis. So whenever like a blood vessel, uh, if it ruptures, well, you have to st stop the uh, blood from from leaving and so fibrinogen is one of those players. So you have albumin, fibrinogen, and then also we have what's known as immunoglobins. So this is just a fancy term for antibodies. Antibodies or immunoglobins, these are components for um, of the uh, immune system within the body. Okay. So next thing is uh, nutrients and hormones. So when I say nutrients, what I'm referring to are carbohydrates, fats, and amino acids or uh, proteins. As far as uh, hormones are concerned, um, one of the two of the main ones that I think about is testosterone and estrogen. But a large majority of the hormones that are found within the body are produced from the um, pituitary gland. So lots and lots of hormones are circulating um, within the blood. So some of the respiratory gases include carbon dioxide and oxygen, as well as you also have these metabolic wastes that are found uh, within the blood. So for instance, urea. This is a component that's um, found within uh, urine. Okay, so that's it for the plasma. So the next thing that we're going to move on to is the formed elements. And uh, with formed elements, you have red blood cells, white blood cells, and then also platelets. So another term for red blood cells is urethrocytes. Urethrocytes. So remember, once again, sites, that means cell. 
urethra is referring to the color, so red. So then you also have um, white blood cells. They're also known as leuco, meaning white, and then sites. So leukocytes, meaning cell, once again. So the function for red blood cells, they function to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide using a carrier which is known as hemoglobin. We will discuss more about hemoglobin a little bit later on. <clears throat> okay, so for um, white blood cells, so these particular ones that are included in this particular part, these are components for innate immunity. I'm going to discuss them here in a bit. So you have, these are players for innate immunity. And then agranulocytes, this is mainly for adaptive immunity. So the general difference between the two, innate versus adaptive, generally speaking, innate is the first uh, immune response whenever a pathogen um, breaches a barrier. And then adaptive immunity takes in if these players here within innate immunity can't get rid of it. Okay, so for white blood cells, I'm just gonna put immunity, but then it gets a little bit more specific. Okay, so granulocytes versus agranulocytes. So what these words mean is that, so site means cell, but then if it contains granules, right? So these are examples here of granulocytes. You can see the granules that are found um, here within the cytoplasm of these cells. And so the three types of granulocytes that you have, so you have neutrophils, you have eosinophils, and then you also have uh, what's known as basophils. So yeah, all the granulocytes giving you the fills. <laughs> so for neutrophils, the uh, what they're responsible for, they are phagocytes. They are phagocytes and they're also the first responder. So whenever there is an infection in any type of tissue, there's some type of antigen around, um, the neutrophils, they're going to be the first ones to um, get to, uh, to get to the site of where this is uh, occurring. And these neutrophils, they secrete, they have, um, so these granules that are found within them, they contain, uh, what they do is they help to break down uh, the pathogen and then they also secrete um, what's known as uh, chemokines. So chemokines are these uh, chemical messengers that will recruit um, the cells that they need in order to uh, recruit other players in order to get rid of the um, infection. Okay, so that's uh, neutrophils. So then eosinophils, they are primarily involved um, fighting off parasitic infections. So parasitic infections. So parasites, they are um, uh, pathogens that they require a host in order to um, stay alive. So eosinophils, they're involved with uh, parasitic infections and then also allergies. Um, basophils, basophils are, they secrete what's known as heparin. Uh, heparin is an anticoagulant. An anticoagulant, it um, prevents um, blood clots from forming. So basophils, they produce heparin, and then they also uh, produce an uh, inflammatory, which is known as histamine. It's also involved um, with allergies. Okay, so that's for the granulocytes. Moving on to agranulocytes, you have what's known as monocytes. So monocytes, uh, both of these are monocytes here. This is a small one, and then this is a um, larger one. So monocytes, they differentiate into, they can become macrophages or macrophages as well as dendritic cells. Okay, so um, the last one here for the um, for the agranulocytes, you have lymphocytes. So lymphocytes, you have B cells, 
and then T cells, or B and T lymphocytes. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the blood components, and in the next lecture, I'm gonna go over hematopoiesis.